Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Excel Hub. Today we're diving into an essential tool for maintaining clean and accurate data in your spreadsheets, data validation. Data validation can help ensure your data entry is consistent and error-free, whether you're managing a small project or working with extensive data sets. Today, we'll cover five key tips you need to know. Let's get started. First, let's set up basic data validation to restrict the type of data that can be entered into a cell. For example, if we want to ensure that only whole numbers between 1 and 100 can be entered, we can do this easily with data validation. Here we have a list of students and their exam scores, and we want to ensure each score is within this range. We can select the range by highlighting the cells where we want to apply the data validation. We can then go into the data tab, click data validation, and in the settings tab, we will choose whole number. We can then select the minimum as one and the maximum as hundred. We can then click okay. Let's now delete two of the cells to demonstrate. If we enter a value between 1 and 100, then this is accepted. Whereas if we enter a value above 100 or below 1, then this is rejected, as you can see. Next, let's create a drop-down list to ensure users can only select from predefined options. This is particularly useful for things like status updates, categories, or any list of standard options. In our scenario, we have a project and we need to track the status of the tasks. We can select the data range, go into data validation, and then create a drop down list for the status column with options like completed, in progress, and not started. To do this, we will select list, and then we will enter the list items separated by commas, as you can see. We can then delete some of the cells to test this. And as you can see, we have a list of three options to choose from, making it very easy to track the status of our tasks. For more complex validation rules, you can use formulae. For example, you might want to ensure that a date entered is always in the future. In this example, we are managing event bookings and need to ensure dates are in the future. We can use a table with columns for the event name and the event date and use validation to ensure that the event date is always greater than today. We will select the range, open data validation and then in the settings tab, we will select custom and in the formula box, we will enter the following formula as I5 is the starting cell. We can then apply and test this. Today's date is the 29th of June 2024 and therefore if we enter dates in the future like this, then this is accepted. But if we enter dates in the past like this, then this is rejected. Next, we want to create a dependent drop-down list in cell L24, which changes the priority markets that are displayed based on the region that has been selected in cell K24. For example, if we were to select South America, we want only Argentina and Brazil to be in the drop-down, as these are the two priority markets in South America. To achieve this, we're firstly going to perform intermediary calculations, which we will then use to create our dependent drop-down lists using data validation. Due to the way that the input table has been set up, we have several duplicate values for the regions. To get around this, we firstly want to extract all the unique regions from column K. The purpose of this is that we don't want to give the user four Europe options or three Asia options to select from, but instead we just want them to be able to select Europe, Asia or South America 
which are the three regions that the company operates in. To do this, we can use the unique function. We can type equals unique and then select the column containing the regions. Next, based on the region selected in cell K24, we want the priority markets to update to show the priority markets within that region. For example, if we type Asia, then we want China, Hong Kong, and India to show in column L. The reason for this is that later on, we will use the priority market showing in column L to create our dropdown list. To filter just the countries within the region selected, we can use the filter function. We type equals filter, first select all the priority markets as our array, and then we'll include the condition we want to filter by. In our case, we want to filter by the region that's been selected, so we can type the following. As you can see, the priority markets are now showing China, Hong Kong, and India. If we change the value in K24 to another region like Europe, the priority markets update accordingly. Now that we have the lists that we want the users to select from, we can incorporate them in the dropdown lists. For the region dropdown list, we'll go into the data tab, select data validation, and then we'll select list. We will then select K16 to K18 to give the user the possibility to select one of the regions. For the priority markets, we'll again go into data validation, select list, but this time, instead of selecting all the cells in the priority markets column, we're going to select just the first cell, L16, and then we'll add a hash key. What this does is identify the non-empty cells below L16 in our column. We're using this instead of selecting all the individual cells because some regions will have more priority markets than others. For example, South America has two priority markets, while Europe has four. And therefore, we want the drop-down list to always incorporate the right amount of options. Let's test it out. First, let's select South America. And then within our priority markets, we have the option to select Argentina or Brazil, which as per our inputs table, are the two priority markets in South America. If we select Europe instead, we can see that the drop-down list has expanded to show the four priority markets in Europe. So that's how you can create a dependence drop-down list in Excel. Next, let's cover error alerts and input messages. Providing clear error messages and input guidance can significantly improve data entry accuracy. Let's add custom error alerts and input messages to our data validation rules. In this example, we have six names and we want to guide users to enter their correct age values. We can select the range, go into data validation, and then firstly, within settings, we can add the criteria that the entry should be a whole number between 18 and 65. We can then go into input message and add a title such as enter the age and an input message such as please enter a number between 18 and 65. We can then go into the error alert tab and add a title like error and then provide an error message such as age must be between 18 and 65. When we select one of the cells, you can see that the input message appears. If we input a figure between 18 and 65, then this is accepted. Whereas if we input a figure outside of those bounds, then we get the error alert. 
So those are some tips and techniques to ensure your data remains consistent and error-free, making your analyses more reliable. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for future Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.